are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. I have a wedding in Sorrento this morning. I'm just checking that I've got everything I need. I was showing you my brush belt. These are my work brushes. I wear them like that. I've lost quite a few over the last year. There's, 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 there's like gaps, but you didn't used to be any gaps. So I'm not quite sure what I've lost, but I don't seem to be missing anything. So that's what's important. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I need to get on my way to Sorrento. I'm leaving Carlo here. And I will see if I can take you with me. Not sure about this one. I can hear rustling in the trees. Indy, where's Daddy? There he is. Hello. Hello. I am going to Sorrento. Oh, wow. Hey, you remember the first one of course. You can stay here and work in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, what are you doing? Um, I'm pruned. Pruning? I'm pruning the lemon tree. Okay. Bye. So as we are coming to the end of the season, I've actually got a week, a whole week between weddings this week. And I decided I'd pop over to England to see my dad just for three or four nights. So yesterday I booked a ticket and within three hours of me booking the ticket, I got an email from EasyJet and my flight had been canceled. <laughs> that was just my luck. So luckily I've managed to rebook onto the next day's flight. So in a couple of days time, I am flying off to London and I'm gonna have four nights at Dad's and I'll be back again by the end of the week. And I'm really looking forward to it. Dad was really happy that I'm coming and uh, I can do some more little videos with him as well, hopefully. Whew. But first Sorrento. And now this wedding, I'm gonna be working from half 11 through till two which is pretty much standard for weddings because most weddings are about four, five in the afternoon here, just so it's not too hot. But the only problem with that is that when I finish at two, I come out and everything in Sorrento shut because here in Italy, they still have the siesta. So the shops close generally between about one, one and four, one and five, so for quite a long time. And for me, it's really inconvenient. because I come out at two, and I can never get any bits and pieces done. Also, EasyJet have now taken away the option to have a hand luggage suitcase, you know, the little cases that you can put in the overhead lockers. I think they cost something like 50 euro extra now. And I'm only going for four days, so I wasn't gonna pay an extra 50 euro because the ticket was only 65 euro. So it'd be silly to pay so much for a case. So I'm going with no luggage. I'm just gonna take a backpack with me and that's all. So I'll pack it with you tomorrow. We'll see what I can fit into a small backpack for four days in England. Luckily I've got clothes and makeup and everything I need there so I don't really need to bring much, but it's gonna be a challenge. I always live in terror of forgetting my makeup bag when I'm on my way to a job, which I did do once in the pouring rain and I had to come all the way back to get it. Now, I don't keep my makeup bag at home because it's far too heavy to carry down, up and down all the steps every time. Where do I keep it? In the local forge, of course.
half an hour early, so I've just gone into reception, told them I'm here, asked if I can have a little walk outside, look at the view. He said yes, so let's go and explore the view. It's summer in Sorrento, get divertimento. 
I'll take this one to the kitchen and try it just to check, but Carla says that they're not very nice. Back down here, all the little starters that I planted with Luca are doing really well, except for some of the spinach. The day after we planted all of this, there was a huge rainstorm, really, really violent one, really, really heavy rain. And a lot of the spinach plants haven't survived, unfortunately. Some of them are okay, but a lot of them just didn't make it. They were too small and they were too delicate. These ones are okay. We also have a bumper crop of oranges and mandarins this year. Huge amount on the tree. Okay, I've got about half an hour and I need to leave to go to the airport, so I'm gonna pack my bag. This is the bag I'm taking, and this is what is going in it. So let's pack it. First of all, most important thing, my laptop. That goes in there. I am taking a, this is always in my handbag. Um, I'm not even taking a handbag because I've got one there I'm gonna use. You can't take, if you take a handbag, I can't take that. So this is coming with me. This has just got lipstick, a mirror, a nail file, a comb, and stuff like that in it. So that is going in the very bottom. My wallet, passport front pocket. Uh, I always forget what these are called. Airpods, is that right? <laughs> in the front pocket. Dad's house key in the front pocket. A Christmassy mask, just in case. I don't think I'm going to need that. A little packet of tissues. Charger cable for my phone, my laptop and the house keys for here. I always put my cables in a bag just so that they don't spring out everywhere my Kindle so I can read. I am taking, oh, it's wrapped up. I'm taking my Fuji camera back to England to send it back to be repaired again. If you remember last year, we had a whole five month long fiasco where I sent it off to be repaired and it took five months to get back again. And unfortunately they didn't repair everything on it. It still has an exposure problem. So that is going back. So I'm not going to be filming on this for the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, all I've got is my phone. So that's what I'm using. Maybe I'll buy a camera when I go, but I doubt it. I'm taking one top with me, which I'm actually using because I'm wrapping up the camera in it just so it doesn't get any, any more damage. So that's going with me. Luckily, I've got plenty of clothes at Dad's house, even though they might not be the most exciting, fashionable clothes. They're better than nothing. I'm taking... Carlo's sunglasses with me because he's broken them <laughs> and hopefully they might be able to fix or replace them. They wouldn't do it here because he bought them in England. And I'm taking my reading glasses with me. That is it. That's all I'm taking. You look very sad. Are you a sad puppy? Are you a little tail waggly? Do you love your mummy? So I made it to England. I've been here for a couple of days actually. Yesterday there was terrible thunderstorms and rain most of the day, which was a bit of a shame, but we did manage to find a two or three hour break in the middle where Dad and I went out for a lovely walk through Home Park near Kingston. We walked into Kingston, we walked along the river, so that was really nice. And today I've planned a whole day out for us in London. So we're gonna take you with us, show you just a little bit of what we're doing, but we're gonna have a nice walk around London. We're gonna to go to Earl's Court and then we're gonna walk from there stopping in various places and finishing in Marylebone, the home of Sherlock Holmes, except we're not going to see the home of Sherlock Holmes. We might walk past it, but we're not going in. We're Just walking down to the station and somebody has left a load of windfall apples for people to help themselves to. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Yeah? Mm, lovely. Oh, so fresh. Mm. Good start to the morning.
We caught a train to Kensington Olympia and walked up Melbury Road where the big old artists' houses are. I had booked tickets to visit Leighton House, a house museum of the artist Lord Leighton. I was curious to see his Arab room and all the beautiful tiles and decorations and it didn't disappoint. From there, we took a walk through Holland Park and into the Japanese gardens, and we sat on a bench for a while and chatted. Then we jumped on a bus to Knightsbridge and had a wander through the ground floor at Harrods cosmetics, the food halls and fine watches and jewellery. All I bought was a new lipstick, but I might have to go back to do some Christmas shopping. There were some great gift ideas in the food hall. We then walked through Hyde Park, past the Serpentine and across to Marble Arch. We cut through Selfridges on Oxford Street and over to Marylebone for a browse in the wonderful Daunt Books before heading home. Wednesday and I have to fly back home today so I thought I'd pack my bag with you again. I've got a few little things so I've got different things to put in my bag this time. So I now have vacuum packed the clothes because I have a skirt, my grey skirt that I actually left behind in August by mistake that I want to bring back home with me and I've bought a packet of socks for Carlo, thrilling content, and a packet of socks for me. So I've got a load of socks and my skirt spare top and a jacket that I bought. So that's all been vacuum packed to save space. That fits nicely in there. Sky asked me if I could buy her some necklaces. So I've got a little pack of necklaces there for her. That doesn't take up any space. Everything I've bought is tiny. I've bought two lipsticks. They're Shiseido lipsticks, but they're different ones. One is a tinted lip balm and one is, um, I think probably has been discontinued, so I won't mention that. Um, and I've also bought an eyeshadow, which is a Chanel Luxury. It's a liquid eyeshadow, and it's sort of like skin colour. I've, I've bought it on today. It's just a very, very subtle but shimmery eyeshadow, which I really liked. I have had Carlo's glasses replaced. What else have I bought? <laughs> bought a new glasses case, just because the old one I had was ridiculously flimsy. So a nice little glasses case. And of course, tea bags. So. I am not drinking any tea with caffeine in at the moment. I've taken out all caffeine and I'm now drinking Rubos. So I've got two boxes. One of them I've put in a jiffy bag just because it's less bulky, but I don't want to take these out of the bag. So I'm going to try and fit all these in. And then there's my wallet and my makeup bag and my tissues that I don't use and my Kindle. I also bought myself a new camera because I've taken my, I bought my Fuji camera back here to send it off to Fuji to be repaired for the second time in a few months. And I'm sort of losing all hope. So I've had a real run of bad luck with anything technological really. So starting with the first vlog camera I bought, which was the Sony ZV-1, uh, that had mechanical problems and had to be sent back to be repaired and it just had a few little things that I didn't like about it so I ended up selling it on eBay and then I bought the Fuji. 
and the first time I filmed at the Fuji, the first video I ever made had no audio at all on it and I thought it was me doing something stupid and ignored it and I kept filming and every now and again there would be audio, sometimes there wouldn't be audio, the exposure fluctuated wildly and there was all sorts of problems with it. So I sent that back to be fixed in October. I didn't get it back until the end of February so it took over four months um, to come back to me which was a huge problem and in the meantime I had to film with my phone and so in April I bought a GoPro no but for some reason the GoPro isn't compatible with my laptop and every time I try and download footage from the GoPro um, it crashes my computer we don't know why so I have to edit anything from the GoPro it has to be first edited on Carla's laptop and then I drop to mine which is a bit of a hassle the problems I have with my computer, some of you will remember that. I bought a new laptop for editing in 2020 and had to send that back because every time I tried to upload video, it crashed the laptop. And then I got a new one, I got a replacement one, and the same thing happened with that. And eventually um, I had that fixed and that's working now, fingers crossed. Um, but yes, the Fuji's continue to cause problems. Some of you, if you're um, very, very aware, you will have noticed that the exposure does fluctuate wildly and it's often ruined quite a lot of shots and I've had to cut bits out or put things over the top and hide it. So now that I'm here, I've sent it back to Fuji again, hoping that they can fix it this time. And in the meanwhile, I'm, I ordered a camera while I was here and I ordered uh, a selfie stick to go with it and a lens to go with it and all the everything arrived apart from last night and it was supposed to arrive two days ago nothing arrived last night 10 o'clock last night the doorbell rang it was the Amazon delivery guy uh, he gave me two boxes one was supposedly the uh, batteries extra batteries and one was the camera I opened it they'd sent the wrong thing we had a emergency waterproof radio instead of a camera and memory card. So I was very upset about that and it's all got to go back. So I'm sending back everything I ordered, the selfie stick, the lens, the batteries, the radio, because they don't go with a radio. And I don't have a camera at all. So I'm now filming on my iPhone. And luckily I've been very, very lucky because I've managed to buy a new iPhone while I've been here. Now they were saying that they're not going to be available at all until November. And my lovely friend Hubert, who is the Amalfitana photographer in Positano, has been keeping an eye out on the Apple stores and sent me a message yesterday morning saying, there's one available in Covent Garden, go, 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 go. So I went onto the Apple store, looked, and there was actually one available in Kingston, my nearest Apple store. So I booked it, dashed up there, got it, and we're filming on that now. So Carlo is now going to be the proud owner of my old iPhone, which is a 12, which is two years old. And that's all we're gonna have until we finally ever, if we ever manage to get a camera that actually works, that's what we're gonna be filming on. Anyhow, I'll finish packing my bag, finish complaining. <laughs> and I didn't really want to talk about this, but it's been weighing so heavily on my mind for months and months, all this bad luck with everything that I try to buy to make the videos with. Um, and I don't like talking about the technical details, but it's been such a huge problem. It's like the world is telling me that I should give up and go and get a job in a shop or something because everything I buy to make videos with has a problem and has to be sent back. And it's just, it's just frustrating. That's all. Anyhow, let's get back to us. <laughs> it's the next day i'm just making some spaghetti bolognese for lunch which you will find my recipe for that in my book which is online as an ebook at the moment on my website details to follow now i know this video has been a bit scarce of carlo you haven't seen much of him so i've made a little bit of 
solo per voi. L'ho fatto io, l'ho editato io e sono io il protagonista. Quindi <laughs> spero che vi piaccia. È la mia prima volta. And we're going to put it out on Wednesday. So he's going to have his own little video on Wednesday this week, which is a little adventure that he went on when I was in England. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you on Wednesday. Ciao everywhere. <laughs>